right, so again, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the uh, second grade parent meeting. Hello. <laughs> Uh, let's start with the quick prayer here. And then the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day, for the gift of our sacraments. We thank you for the graces to raise our children in your uh, statutes and in your ways. We thank you for the graces to grow closer to you each day and to know and love you more. And we ask that you would guide our time together today and help us to understand how you are working in our lives and how you are preparing us to receive you for the first time or the 150th time. And uh, we commit our time to Mary with Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. All right, so, as mentioned, the, the, the goal of today's meeting is um, we're doing this family faith formation. You remember I told you, stronger Catholics, stronger families, and everything that means at the beginning of the year. And so be, because we're doing a different type of program, the way a child or a family is prepared for sacraments is a little different than what we expected before, too. We said we had a different expectation of success when we were doing this program. So you have a different expectation of how a child is prepared to receive sacraments as well, uh, because it's different. <laughs> so we're here today to just sort of give you that brief overview so you see how you're being successful at ensuring your children are ready for the sacraments. Um, in previous years, if you have gone through this process before, the general expectation was something to the extent of, well, did I get my child to classes? Are they participating in those classes and doing well in those classes, relatively speaking? You know, um, and if I did all those things, and by the end, they were considered prepared for sacraments. And, <clears throat> oh, do we need um, another table? You got that? Oh, yeah. All right. So, do we need... Now, in that case, and we succeeded at doing those things, we said we are prepared for sacraments. Um, what we have expected here is going to be a little bit different. And it's going to be a little bit different because what we're doing is different. And where that difference comes from comes in our understanding of the theology of the sacrament, like meaning this, the study of what God expects of us in the sacrament. So if you were to dive into the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which I know is not an exciting activity for many people. But if you were to make that dive into the Catechism of the Catholic Church, you would find when you look under sacrament, there's a couple expectations the church has to consider a, to consider a person prepared to meet this, prepared to receive a sacrament. And there are really four main things. The first thing being that they have a basic understanding of the sacrament. So in terms of the Eucharist, that might be as simple as the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus. It can be that simple, you know. Um, we don't have to understand transubstantiation and um, essential change and all those other philosophical things that are in the catechism. If we get the, the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus and Jesus lives inside of me, hey, that's, that's a basic understanding, you know. Um, second is that the person has a desire for the sacrament. You may remember I've said multiple times, God will never force his love upon us. God will never force anything upon us. He's constantly giving to us, but he does not force upon us. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, God does not want to force the sacraments upon us. He, um, he, he wants us to desire them. So uh, desire can be expressed as simple as, I want that. You know, how many of your children, how many of you have had your children at some point try to receive communion or <laughs> say, I want to receive communion? Oh, I can hear the gills and the laughing. This is occurring. Congratulations, they have a desire for the sacrament. Isn't that wonderful? Like, uh, and this, is, this is a good thing. So the third thing is the basic logistics. And now this is the one that is very easy to get tripped up on. By logistics, we just mean what you're supposed to do, say, or receive, etc. in the sacrament. 
hands. So again, for communion, it's understanding, you know, I put my hands out or I open my mouth to read if I'm receiving on the tongue and, you know, uh, the priest puts it in my hand, I don't take it from him and then I consume it right away and I go and pray. Like that basic flow that we all do so naturally. <laughs> some understanding of that. Now the tricky part is people can, you and I, we can very easily get caught up in the idea of like, well, we have to understand it perfectly. Is my hand perfectly flat? You know, did I wait to the last second that he actually put it on my hand? Did I jump too early? You know, all these little things. No, like, like just understanding like, hey, this is what I do. If they, if their mind goes completely blank as soon as they get up there first time, that's okay. Like. It's intimidating the first time, potentially, because you know, you're in this fancy dress or suit and everybody's watching you and stuff. So, like, if they have, if, if at home they have some basic understanding of, like, oh yeah, this is how I receive, then you're in the right direction because they're going to be receiving the rest of their life. So they have lots of time to figure out the actual logistics after that first communion. So, um, but ha by having some understanding beforehand so they're not completely clueless about it. And then the final expectation is continued effort. A sacrament is never the ending, it is always the beginning. So the expectation that, with communion, that the expectation being, okay, you're going to keep coming to Mass weekly, you're going to keep uh, receiving weekly, you're going to continue to learn about what the Eucharist is throughout your life, you know, but just because our basic understanding started with the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus, we don't want to stay there. We want to eventually get into transubstantiation and all these other things that the church has to offer about understanding the Eucharist, just not all before we receive for the first time. So continued effort that we're going to keep growing in our faith and keep diving into it and experiencing it and um, doing more with it and fulfilling the responsibilities that come with that. So, if those are the four things we have to do to be considered to be prepared for a sacrament, let's talk about what our program is doing to help you achieve those things. So first off, your basic understanding. Um, the activities in the book will help with that. The, the activities in the book very much help with the basic understanding. They can very easily get your child to the bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus. And probably a little bit further than that too, but just that bottom level, here's where we started. Because remember, this is not the finishing point. The bread and wine become the body and blood of Jesus. That's not where we stop. We're going to keep going over time. But in terms of preparation for the sacrament, understanding this is important because it's Jesus, the book will get you there. And, uh, and then, then it will build upon that as you go. But now, the bigger thing, and this is the, the, what I'm about to tell you here, this will help with all four things. And this is the most important thing you could possibly do for preparation for a First Communion. Like, above and beyond anything else you could possibly do, this is going to be the most effective thing. I got your attention now. <laughs> um, go to Mass each week and have your kids walk through the Communion line with you. It's that simple. Uh, granted, they're not going to be receiving, but just have them walk through the communion line with you. Um, I do not know of a six to seven year old, well, seven, six to eight year old in the world. I do not know of a single six to eight year old in the world who, if you let them partially participate in the Eucharist like that by walking through the communion line each week while you're receiving, who eventually at some point won't say, "When do I get to do that?" I don't know any child who will not do that. I also do not know any child who is six to eight years old, who will walk through that line every week with you, see what you and other people around you are doing each week, and not figure it out. The basic gist of it. I mean, you talk to any Eucharistic minister, myself included, any Eucharistic minister, and who's been doing the job for a little bit of time, and they will tell you their story about the time they almost gave a child their first communion too early. Because the kid came up and knew exactly what to do. I think my favorite one for me personally was this, um, I was um, sitting there giving out the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, and this little girl comes up and she's got this, uh, standing up straight, she puts her hands out, and I should have noticed the big dumb smile on her face, but I didn't. And so I say, the body of the Christ, body of Christ, and somebody this, no! And mom's like leaping in front of me saying, she's not ready yet! And I'm like, oh, okay, well, Fooled me, you know? 
Like, kids pick up on this stuff so easily and so naturally. So go, taking them to the mass each week and having them walk through the communion line with you each week. If you're at the communion line for Father, having them receive their blessing from Father, you know, they can come up with their arms crossed for a blessing. That is the absolute best preparation you can possibly do for this sacrament. And it's so easy. <laughs> um, then, then the second pairing to that is as you're going through the activities in the book, when you get to the point in the book where maybe you discuss, you know, um, the logistics of receiving. Notice how it's all blended together, all my four things, but that's okay. Um, I mean, just discuss the logistics of receiving. Now when you're at Mass, you have something to point out. Hey, you notice how... So and so received on the hand. Notice how they receive on the tongue. Hey, you know, you know notice how um, how everyone's praying right now. You can point out the things you actually talk about in your activities at church as you're there. Um, this the third best thing for basic understanding is you sharing your experience, your reasoning behind why you receive the Eucharist and why you go to the and why you do these things. You know, when you start talking about confession and the Eucharist in the book, it'll start talking about what it does, and you being able to share your story, be it good or bad, <laughs> be it good or bad, you sharing your story and your experience is going to be a super impactful, powerful thing. You know, being able to say, I receive the Eucharist every week because whatever. Being able to say, I go to confession, however often that is, because that's going to be super impactful. Or, or being able to say, you know, I haven't been to confession in a long time, but this is important. I think I need to start going because you're going to be going soon. We should do this together. I mean, what a, what a wonderful thing to be able to tell your children. Um, being able to say... Yeah, I don't completely know why I received the Eucharist. I just sort of do it because I was taught that, but I want to I want to know more about it, and I want to learn it with you. Being able to say something like that, if that's the position you're in, don't lie to your kids. I'm not telling you to lie to your kids. But if you're in that position, being able to share that vulnerability, I know, it's going to be so impactful, and it's going to be doing so much for their preparation. So basic understanding, basic desire, we sort of covered that already. As you go through this process, the desire is going to come. As you talk about it, as you point out what other people are doing, as you have them go through the line of communion with you each week, if you have them come to confession with you, don't take them into the confessional with you, but if you go to confession, bring them with you so you can see the process and see what people do, the desire will come. It'll just be natural, because kids like to be included. They, they don't like being discluded. Um, a simple proof, how many of you have had the problem where you put the kids to bed, you say, yes, kids are in bed, honey, let's go watch a movie, you turn on the TV, and within the first few minutes, mommy, and they find every single excuse to come out, like super creative excuses. Have we had this story happen before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like kids don't want to be excluded. So, uh, so if there, if you are talking to them, person, the desire is just going to naturally come. Um, now, a, a good caveat on that: we said that you need to have a basic desire for the sacrament. Every now and then, not often, but every now and then, you will get a child who will say, "I don't want to receive the sacrament. I want nothing to do with that." If that happens, don't parent. So, first off, if you find, if we find out through exploration, that it truly is a matter of they don't want the sacrament. If, I mean, if it's really, really, truly that, which I doubt, but if it's really, truly that, the good news is this is not the one and only time that they can possibly receive. We can do this any time along the road. You know, and we can do things to help build that desire and so on. Um, so this is not a one, once and done, oh, you missed it too bad kind of a deal. Now you are just lost into, I don't know, sacramental limbo or something like that. <laughs> but more so than that, more often than not, if you really dig into it, we'll find that I don't want to receive the sacrament is actually code for something else. Like, I'm scared about everybody looking at me, or I'm worried about getting it wrong, or I'm just uncomfortable with this whole process right now because I, I don't feel like I know what I'm doing. 
you know and, and so like if you are hearing i don't want to receive it then that's a good point to have a conversation deeper into that find out what's going on and that's something that we can help with if you need help with that if you're feeling lost you know we, we can help you with that uh but like don't accept don't accept i don't want the sacrament in, in place of i'm scared about the sacrament or i'm worried about it or i'm not feeling confident um I, I, I don't want it does not always mean, does not always mean exactly what it sounds like. Um, another thing that you can do to help with that basic desire and understanding, and a good point where you can put your stories in too about your experiences with the sacraments, confession, and the Eucharist, car conversations. Which can be done at the kitchen table, they can be done in the car, they can be done, you know, um, I don't know, sitting in the dentist's office waiting for your name to be called. Like you can, just because it's made to hang on your rearview mirror doesn't mean you have to do it only in the car. You can cut that out, take it with you wherever you want, or take a picture of it so it's on your phone, and wherever it works for you, you can have those conversations. But those are going to be great starting points for being able to share your experiences with the sacraments. Logistics. Again, the book has activities that will cover logistics. As I said before, actually going through the communion line is going to do, be the best teacher. Um, again, taking them with you to confession, and then, again, not into the confessional, but just letting them see the people go through the line and talking about it afterwards. You know, well, here's what I did, here's what I said. And especially if you do the activity and connect it to what you did. So um, you do an activity on the logistics of confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned, has been however long since confession, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then you end up going to confession and afterwards saying, well, I went in, it was just like the book said. You know, I told Father this, he said that, da, 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 those types of things. That's going to be super awesome for just imprinting those logistics. Um, if you want to, something great for confession is you can practice confession. I mean, obviously, you can't give your kids that solution, but you can just go through the process. Process, you know. Okay, let, let's let's play confession. I'll sit down. You sit down here. I'll be the priest. And if you want, let them be the priest at one point. You know, and you can model the uh, the act, the words and actions. Like uh, if if your kids are open to that, that's a wonderful thing to do. Um, but, um, and then finally, continued effort. So continued effort in terms of continuation, going to mass and learning about the sacraments. Currently, your children are 100% dependent upon you to be their continued effort. Because um, as far as I know, none of them are driving themselves to Mass. And uh, they, they probably still are at a point where they need some formation in terms of learning the routine of prayer and things like that. So uh, this is very much the same way that you, I'm assuming you all formed your kids for things like, no, you can't get little Jimmy when you don't like him. Or you formed their behaviors for like, hey, you have chores to do. Um, and you, you, you taught them these things over time because they weren't learning them themselves. You, you showed them how to do this. And it's the same way, like taking them to Mass, saying, hey, we're going to do grace before meals. Hey, let's do a Hail Mary before bed. Well, whatever, you know. Um, they're, they're relying upon you for continuing that. One day they will take the reins. And they will, you know, do their Christian Catholic life on their own. But right now, they're relying upon you which is good and wonderful. Um, so to so sort of sum that all up, we have these four things we have to do to prepare for a sacrament. We need basic desire, basic um, understanding, logistics, and continued effort. And really, there's only a couple things you have to do to have, get those four things going for the sacraments. One, do the book activities. Two, take your kids with you to Mass and Confession and then talk about those experiences with them and let them see what's going on. And three, uh, try and share your experiences and hear their questions and model, you know, play, play, play sacraments with them. Uh, and that'll get you pretty much there. Like that, if you do those things, that'll get you pretty much there. Um, so I, I have some dates for you, but before that, let me ask, are there any questions or things you need clarified or uh, anything like that? Will, will there be a formal practice for the kids before communion? Like um, lining up and seating and getting up? So not right before communion, right. but, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
but we have the SAC memory tree this gotcha. year, and okay. we'll go over that there in one of those stations. So yeah, so they'll have a chance to like you know come up and do the whole line thing in the church, okay. in the church. So um, and in, and again, like if they're going through the line with you each week, then by the time we get to practice, it should be just a matter of maybe small tweaks of like okay, well you know maybe don't hold your hand like this, you know mm -hmm. maybe hold it a bit flatter, but like. They, they should pretty much have it down because they've seen it every week, pretty much. But yeah, there will be some formal practice at the Saturday retreat. And just one more thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, will, be, will the kids sit together or with their families? Is it the row? Have, has that been decided? Do we know Is that? It, yeah. I think when Ava received it was with the family, we had a row. Yeah. Or are they separate from the family? So is that decided? What I think is going to happen, which is what we did last year, was um, the kids, each family got like a certain okay. number of seats, and then the kids sat on the end of the queue, and we dismissed the um, families that way. So the kid goes first, and the family receives communion from any first semester or the family on the other side. So the kids will sit in queues during the class. Gotcha. Okay. Um, we found that they're much better behaved that way. <laughs> <laughs> so each family would get a Yeah, so you can expect to be sitting with the kids for communion, but if that changes, you're getting emails right. and stuff okay. letting you know, and we'll keep you in the loop. Yes? So, it doesn't take all the way, but I went here for my first communion in second grade. Mm -hmm. We did chalices mm -hmm. with our, are we going to do anything like that with them this year, or is that something we need? Because I still have mine, my brother still has his, and we still get them out, like, you know, for cool. Are we going to do anything like that for them this year? I don't think that's a station we do at the retreat anymore. Okay. Uh, but on the same hand, like if that was something that was really meaningful to you, okay. um, I don't see why you couldn't work it into one of the book activities. Like find one of the activities in the book where you say, hey, this could go along well with this activity, and say. Preparation for the sacraments and everything. Good. And you know what I like about that is I'm not just seeing head nods, I'm seeing smiling head nods. So that's really encouraging. Um, the one, uh, so yeah, dates, dates. So first date, uh, worth noting, Sunday, November 20th is a community meeting. But that community meeting is going to be a penance service. So that's going to be an opportunity for you to bring your kids and your family here and let them see what confession is all about and how it works and where you go. So um, that, that's if, if Saturdays and Thursdays is just like, oh man, it's chaotic for our family, uh, that November community meeting will have multiple priests here and stuff and you'll be able to have your kids see what's going on. Again, don't take them into confessional with you, but they, you can talk to them about it afterwards and everything. What time is that? Uh, we are 10 to 11 on that day. November, November, November. 20th. November oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Say that again. November 20th. And uh, then next date, February 12th, which is a Sunday. Um, that will be the big sacrament meeting. So we'll have the school first communion parents here too, and it'll be, you know, here's the date for first communion, here's the logistics, here's what to wear, here's what not to wear, here's the seating chart, here's all the things that you want to know about first communion and first confession and so on and so forth. And so uh, that'll be, um, again, I believe we're doing 10 to 11 on that one. So February 12th. All right, then March 11th, which is a Saturday. So if you've gone through the First Communion process before here, 
This is going to be a slight tweak from what you did last um, did last time. Uh, March 11th, Saturday, March 11th, is going to be the first the sacrament retreat and first confession all on the same day. So they're come in, they do the retreat for two hours or however long it is, and right afterwards will be first confession. Um, and then that way they've had all their prep and practice and everything and all their retreat, go right into the sacrament and it'll flow very nicely. So we save you another Saturday that way too. You don't have to go back on the second so Saturday. Actually doing their first penance on that day. Right after the retreat, yep. So are parents involved at all or is it all? So parent, by all means, you're, you're, we were invited to the first uh, confession service, absolutely. Right. Um, for the retreat, I know we look for people to help with that. I think okay. we also, we'd have to figure out the details, but I think we can also arrange it that if you want to just hang out until it's time, we can make that work. You know, um, if you want to be, uh, do we? Do we let them follow their kids around? Has that been a thing or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you can follow your child around from station to station if you want, participate in that way. Um, like, we'll, we honestly have a few rough edges to work out on that, but uh, we're very convinced it's going to work. But like, you can, you can drop them off their retreat, go, if you have to drop someone off at sports or something, come back, that's okay, but that will all be at the same time. So I think the retreat starts at 9, we finish at 11, and so first communion should be right right after. First penance. First pen, sorry, first penance should be right after that, maybe a little bit of foot time, you know, just get people seated and everything. But, okay. um, but all on the same day there. Then the final date I have for you is... April 16th mm. is going to be First Communion. It's a Sunday. Huh? It's a Sunday. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a and I think we are at 2 o'clock on that mm -hmm. day. Yeah. 2 o'clock? Yeah. 2 o'clock on that day. And we will again go over all these things on the 12th of the sacrament meeting. So you get all those dates again and everything and further details on them. Uh, but those are the big things to put in your calendar for now. So any other questions I can answer? Any other whatever? You know, are we all good? I love it when I leave a crowd silent. It's great. <laughs> all right, well then, uh, we'll do a quick prayer and you can be on your own. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right, well, thank you so much. If you have other questions, you listen to our here, you can come up and see us. Uh, other than that, have a wonderful day, and thanks for coming.